Greetings and welcome back. In this video, we're gonna take the circuit that we build in our last video and actually do some voltage measurements on it. This is super exciting. We're starting to get sophisticated in the sense that we know how to build circuits and we're about to learn how to measure electronic data on those circuits. As a nerd would say, oh, this is amazing. All right, let's go ahead and connect the power source. This function, uh, this circuit is now powered. There's five volts across those, at least ideally. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna grab an electronic component called a multimeter. It's called a digital multimeter. Some people call this a DMM. This multimeter has some uh, kind of interesting features about it, and so we'll kind of call this out. Um, this is a digital display. The reason that it's digital is because it actually shows up as digital numbers. A long time ago, they used to have multimeters that had like a analog multimeter that had almost like a analog clock. There's a little thing that came, went like that. The digital version, when I turn it on, you'll actually see digital numbers. So that's kind of nice. So that's right there. It's called the digital display. This, um, these buttons we'll talk about later. Uh, what we're going to talk about today, this is the function and power dial. Um, when I turn this from the off position onto one of the options, I am turning the power on. So that's why we call it the power dial. When we say, uh, kind of fun on this, that there are two off positions, and that's because um, sometimes I'm using features on this side and I don't want to have to be lazy and come all the way back. Um, the function dial, the reason why I call it function dial is because there's a bunch of different functionalities in this. This is a kind of a marvel of modern science to have so many tools in one. It's the equivalent of like the Swiss army knife of measurement tools for electronic components in the sense that there's a lot combined in one. We're going to focus on measuring voltages and amps. Um, in particular, I think we're going to do milliamps. We're going to kind of focus in that range. Um, so for those of you that are a little bit uh, aware of this, we have a 5 volt battery and a 1K resistor. So there should be about 5 milliamps running through this because uh, Ohm's law says V equals I R. So volts is current times resistors. One volt equals one amp times one ohm. Another way to say that is if I have kilo ohms, then I must have milliamps. Don't worry about that if you haven't seen this before. It's just order of magnitude calculations. We will get into that in later videos. But the fact of the matter is on this function dial, we're gonna focus in on measuring volts and then also measuring milliamps here. The next thing we are gonna do before we make our measurement is we're gonna get our clips so in this case, we have two clips. Um, this is a, what we're gonna call the positive lead. Positive, we're gonna think about as red. Here, we notice that we're gonna try to measure volts in this case. So I'm gonna connect this probe to the positive volts. And it's kind of hard to see that on this exact screen. So you see how it says volts in there. It also has like a little red color coding inside the darn thing. So in that situation, we can actually just connect that here. Uh, this is what we call a little clip probe. We're gonna see that we can connect that to the top. And what's nice about that is that I don't have to touch it. It's automatically on. So now we've connected the red lead or the positive lead to the corresponding positive um, jack. <laughs> and then we're gonna connect the black lead, the negative lead of our voltmeter to the negative jack. In this situation, um, in order to test volts, because this is a volt measurement, we're gonna actually click this thing over to volts. And right now, um, we're kind of seeing that the multimeter is reading a negative point, a negative 0, uh, 0.38 millivolts. That's very, very low. In order to make this measurement, what we're gonna do is connect the black lead to the bottom of the resistor, and what I mean bottom, I mean this, the black lead of the multimeter is gonna be connected to the same electrical connection point as the black lead of our voltage source. Same thing we're gonna do over here, we're gonna take the red lead of our multimeter and connect it to the top of the resistor, 
And notice we are now getting a measurement of the volts across that. So this thing has 4.96 volts. Welcome to applied mathematics. Remember I said that the ideal version of this voltage source provides five volts, but what we're noticing is the ideal representation is not what we actually achieve. This is one of the most beautiful and difficult things of mathematics applied to real world that we as the users of that math have to be able to differentiate, to distinguish mathematical modeling properties from the actual physical underlying dynamics of the phenomenon that we're studying. This is gonna get so much more interesting as we go on, but that's your first example. I said that this was five. The actual measurement says 4.96. There is a lot going on with uh, representation and ideas in measuring voltages. Think about this as a very fancy ruler. It's a ruler where I'm connecting the bottom of the ruler to the bottom of the resistor. I'm connecting the top of the ruler to the top of the resistor, and then it tells me what the length difference is between that. So from here to there, we travel 4.96 units along that and which what that means is if I dropped a positive charge up here like like let's say a mass right so think about this as height rather than volts we're used to thinking about heights it's not so often that in, in life we get in fun conversations about voltages with random people so imagine we have like a mass on the bottom here so that mass is like set at the zero position and then this source actually brings that mass up, it actually picks it up to a higher level. And the question that we're gonna ask ourselves is, well, what would happen, what's the potential to, for that mass to move in, the, in gravity? So um, because I've increased the height of that, I have more potential for movement. So if I drop the thing, it's gonna go back towards the zero position. And the question is, well, how large is that potential to move? And that's where we bring in units to measure that. That's exactly what this is. It's a measurement of kind of potential differences between two points on that circuit. I do wanna say that in electronics, polarity matters. The, the location at which I um, put the negative lead very much determines the type of number that I have out. So notice, I'm a, so what we just saw is that was 4.96 um, volts. And that 4.96 was with reference to the measurement tool that I was using. Now check this out. I haven't changed anything having to do with the actual electronics on this circuit. And yet, if I were to connect the negative lead of my multimeter to the positive lead of my voltage source and the positive lead of my multimeter to the negative lead, of my voltage source, or in this case the resistor, but it's connected to those, notice that I get a negative number. Now, it's not like the electronic um, behavior of this resistor and the circuit has changed. I didn't touch the circuit itself. What changed was the reference direction of my measurement. And we're gonna talk more about this in the next video when we start to think about what voltages mean and how to kind of give a nice analogy. And then also when we're measuring voltages, what the heck does a measurement actually stand for? For now though, just ref realize that when we are measuring voltages across an element, so in this case, we're measuring the voltage across this resistor, we attach the black negative lead of our multimeter to one end. We attach the positive lead of the multimeter to another end. The digital multimeter will output a voltage value. If the voltage value is positive, that means that the actual voltage drop is in the direction of the leads of the multimeter. So in this case, if I went from here, from the bottom, black lead to the red lead, there is a positive 4.96 volts upwards. If on the other hand, like we saw earlier, if I switch this, if I go black on top and red on the bottom, my multimeter is now telling me that I have a negative 4.9 from here to there. And what that means is really this bottom metal part of the resistor 
is 4.96 volts below the top part. It's the negative reference. Don't worry about that. Don't trip right now. Just I hope that this is confusing the um, the non-initiated um, uh, viewer to say like, whoa, there's some interesting stuff having to do with positive and negative measurement. Yes, that is exactly the point here. It's not quite the same as just a standard ruler um, and we'll see that in the next video. Okay, so we've just made our first voltage measurement. In the next video, we'll actually see what this voltage measurement, um, how, how to interpret it and how to think about it. I did want to mention something though. Um, what we just did in this measurement, we can actually represent using the following circuit diagram. So here's a picture of the actual voltage measurement that we took on screen here. And then here is a circuit diagram, an ideal realization of that. Notice in the diagram, we're claiming that this voltage source is five volts. In the physical measurement, we're claiming that it's actually 4.97, the moment I took that picture, 4.96 in this video. Notice, ideal mathematical model, real measured data, they're close, but they're not identical. This little diagram over here is an ideal realization of taking a volt measurement using a digital multimeter, in this case, a voltage uh, voltmeter, I think we call it. And when I put the red lead of the meter up on top and the black on the bottom, that defines the polarity. So notice I can kind of say like, when I make this measurement, whatever number comes out, I'm assuming that the top of this meter was, the positive sign was up here, and the negative was down there. So I just wanted to kind of show you that schematic. Similarly, the schematic for the opposite polarity looks like this, literally the exact same uh, voltage source. We've got a resistor over here. We just switched the black and the red lead. All right, let's hop on to that next video and take a look at what this all kind of means in terms of reality. See you there.